There are growing questions about the future of the 2024 race for president after a debate that saw former President Trump continuing to spread falsehoods while incumbent President Joe Biden at times stumbled over his own talking points. With the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. Thank you, President uh, Biden. President Trump? Well, he's right. He did beat Medicare. He beat it to death. Well, still, a CNN post-debate poll showed 81% of registered voters who watched said the debate had no effect on their choice in November. Professor Anthony Fowler teaches political science at the University of Chicago Harris School of Public Policy. He joins me this morning to talk more about how the debate might impact moderate voters across the U.S. Anthony, it's good to see you. Thanks for being with me. It's good to see you, of course. Happy to be here. So that was a striking moment that, that our viewers just saw when the, the president sort of lost his train of thought. And I mentioned the CNN poll. Uh, yes, several people not changing their mind, but about 19 percent said they are or are considering changing their vote. What do you anticipate the impact on moderate, on independent voters to be as a result of that debate? I think it was, it was it was hard to watch that clip just now, um, just like it was hard to watch last night. Um, I think for a lot of moderate voters, they will say they had genuine uncertainty about how how fit for office President Biden is, how up to the task he is. And I think if they maybe they haven't been watching his other public appearances recently, they haven't seen him unscripted in a long time, and they watch this and they said, okay, he's he's worse than we thought. And so I, th I suspect this probably will have a big impact because that was one of the big question marks going to this debate is, is Biden with it? Is he on top of the issues and so forth? And, and that was a very disappointing performance from Biden. Well, let me just dig a little further on that. Look, people have had bad debate performances before. President Obama's first debate in, in 2012 against Mitt Romney uh, looked like he just wasn't prepared. He probably wasn't worried about it, didn't do very well, and then seemed to get it together after that. Ronald Reagan had a moment in the 80s where he started wandering off from his answers. But, but last night for, for President Biden, it, it was sort of continually troublesome to watch that, as I think you just sort of indicated. Um, a lot of people say debates don't matter, that debates don't. Are we in a year where actually here it might make a difference or will we forget over time what we witnessed? I think the debates do matter. I mean, you might think this one shouldn't matter that much because it's Biden-Trump. It's a rematch of last time. What new information is there to learn about Biden and Trump? But the new information probably was to what extent has Biden been aging as president? To what extent is he still, uh, has he lost some mental faculties and so forth? And I think to the extent that we learned about that, most of the information was bad for, bad for Biden. So I think I wouldn't be surprised if this debate does have a big impact. Even I, I might even go as far as to say there's a chance that he that he will drop out before the convention. Uh, we obviously don't know for sure if that'll happen, but but this debate could have been a, a trial run to see is he really on top of it, and if he's not, we at least have time to replace him. Uh, you know, before it's too late. So I've been waiting to ask you this question because I know you do a lot of research about moderate voters. And my question in 2024, how is anybody either moderate or undecided these days? Well, most people are moderate. Most people are somewhere in the middle. If you ask them, you know, where do you stand on taxes? Where do you stand on abortion? Pick your pick your favorite issue of the day. Most people will say, well, I'm somewhere I'm somewhere to the right of of Biden and Pelosi and 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 Schumer and so forth, and I'm somewhere to the left of Trump and McConnell. So most people, they you know, they just generally are in the middle. Now, how could you be undecided about Trump and Biden, um, given how much information we know about them and so forth? It could be that you're just generally in the middle, that you maybe you don't like either of them that much, and you're you're disappointed that those are your two choices on offer. And given those two choices that you don't like, you have to pick one, and you're not sure which way you're going to go. Well, and, and we do know, based on what you're saying, while po polls are clear, most Americans do not want this matchup to happen. But at, at this moment, this is the matchup. Sort of curious, um, uh, what in this election cycle, what do you expect the possibility of an impact of a third party candidate? You know, Ross Perot arguably threw the election to Bill Clinton uh, back in, in 1992. What do you expect could happen here uh, with, with, say, a Bobby Kennedy Jr. or, you know, Cornell West. I mean, there's several people who have their hats in the rings, and these elections are decided by razor thin margins. Certainly, a third party candidate could turn out to be pivotal in this election. It probably has been before. Um, and this is likely, to, this could easily be a close election where the presence of those third party candidates makes a difference. I'm genuinely surprised that there's not a more viable, moderate third party candidate running. I might have thought, given the unpopularity of Trump and Biden, given all of their baggage and so forth, 
this would be the best opportunity for a third party candidate to win a presidential election, perhaps since 1912. And the fact that there isn't a really competent, experienced, moderate candidate running as a third party candidate is perhaps surprising and I think disappointing for a lot of people in the middle. But nevertheless, I think there are so many people who are disappointed with the choices on offer, they might find themselves voting for Cornell West or RFK Jr., even if they don't particularly love those candidates either, but just because they want to voice how, how, uh, you know, how frustrated they are with the choices on offer. I'm sort of curious, lots of books these days, as you know, about disinformation and misinformation. And I'm curious as to, uh, you know, people get, get into a bubble with what they will expose themselves to. Does that impact, uh, in your view, in your study of, of moderates and those kind of voters, the, the notion of getting into an information bubble where you don't let anything come in that doesn't feed your point of view? I think things aren't as bad as, as you think. Uh, most Americans, they're friends with people from the other party. They consume news from a wide range of sources. Um, it, it probably is true for a small number of extremists and partisan activist types who they only talk to each other. They're in their little echo chambers on cable news and social media and so forth. But I think that doesn't apply to most most Americans. Most Americans are somewhere in the middle. Uh, they're, they're, they're a little bit more open-minded, and they're not stuck in these echo chambers. I'm curious, just a little moment left, but if either of these candidates or their teams came to you and asked for advice about what to do going forward, um, would you, what advice would you have for them? And do you see another matchup in September as currently scheduled? I probably would tell the Biden team that, that, that Biden should drop out. Now, one reason he maybe he hasn't dropped out is there isn't an obvious alternative that, that would clearly beat Trump. Um, but uh, but I think I think at this point, voters have lost a lot of confidence in him as a candidate. Um, and I think there are other there's other advice I would give to the Democratic Party about what positions they should be taking and what they could do to reach out a big, you know, the Democratic Party has lost the support of working class voters, uh, which which used to be their bread and butter. And I think they need to make serious efforts to try to appeal to the working class and actually offer them something that, that could win them over. Um, and I think on the, you know, on the Republican side, I think there's a lot of extremism on the Republican side as well. They're surely losing votes as well by taking extreme positions. Um, you know, to pick one example, Trump waffled a little bit on abortion last night. On right. the one hand, he said it should be up to the states, but then he said, oh, but in some cases, the states are doing these crazy things and we should stop that. And I think that leaves a lot of people wondering, what is he really going to do on abortion? And I think if they, if they advocated, if they took a stronger, more moderate position, I think, yeah. that would, I think that would help them. And that's why you study this stuff. Professor Anthony Fowler from UFC Harris School of Public Policy, thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Have a good Sunday. You too. Thanks so much. You got it. Up next on WGN TV Political Report, can a former president be prosecuted for their conduct while in office? That's what the Supreme Court will decide tomorrow. We're going to tell you about it when we come back.